Hey everyone, welcome to the 2017 US Imagine Cup Finals online broadcast. I'm Sabrina from Nerdy and Quirky, and I couldn't be more excited that you decided to come along for the ride with this year's amazing teams. The Imagine Cup is Microsoft's global competition where thousands of students duke it out to take home an awesome trophy, a bunch of cash, and get access to some amazing tools, coaching, and advice along the way. During the show, we'll meet the teams, check out their awesome inventions, we'll get you all access to sessions where the teams get tips on how to make their ideas shine so that you can use those same tips to bring your projects to the next level. And finally, we'll reveal this year's winners. Teams enter from all over the world, but it all starts at a local level. Here in the US, there are some incredible entries from all over the country. From this year's entrance, six will win up to $6,000 and move on to the global competition, where they'll have a chance to win up to $100,000. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. In order to win, teams will have to impress our judges. So let's meet them right now. My name's Larry Herb. Uh, most people know me in the gaming community, know me as Major Nelson. I I'm excited to see the creativity of the students. I mean, when you unlock the, the passion and creativity of this generation with the technology they have access to, it's, the, the, the possibilities are limitless. Hi, my name is Ashley Crowder. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ventana, uh, a hologram augmented reality company. It's so exciting to see even freshmen in college who are already thinking about starting a company. It's really inspiring. And of course, I'm always recruiting for my own company, so it's great to meet amazing engineers. My name is Dalal Wahidi, and I serve as the executive director for We Day Global. It's my first time being a judge on the Imagine Cup. Uh, really amazing to see how students are working hard to pitch ideas to change the world and their own local communities using technology. Hi, my name is Paul Saraf. I'm with Starbucks. I'm a partner at Starbucks, responsible for the web and mobile experiences for all of our customers. I'm just hoping to see some, some great out-of-the-box thinking and innovative ideas uh, solving real-world real, real world problems. My name is Erin. I am with Storm Sensor. I'm a CEO and co-founder. What I really want to help them understand is some of the business case for what they're working on, um, who their partners are, who their customers are, basically from start to finish, how they envision making their product happen. I'm John Shuchuk, and I'm with Microsoft. Um, I'm a technical fellow at Microsoft, leading the engagement with external teams. Uh, one part is judging, saying, hey, do we think that this thing that is being built solves a problem? Are they going to be able to get it delivered so that people can use it? But I think the other key part of the whole Imagine Cup uh, engagement is around coaching. Like, we'll have great discussions about, well, is that really the fastest way to get to your market? Maybe you could consider working with some nonprofits to get it there. And I really like that, that interaction that we have with the students. So as a judge, that's probably the most exciting part. Those are the judges. Now let's meet the teams. From Arizona State, this team came up with a smarter way to protect your head. Using EEG feedback and augmented reality, they're hoping to make a factory floor just a little bit safer. Hi, we are Effective Robotics from, from Arizona State University. University. Our goal uh, with this project is to help humans and robots collaborate in a better way. There was a fatal accident in a, in a German automobile plant. This was an incident where a robot actually killed a, a human worker on the plant. So that's where our journey began. We tried to figure out what can be done to bridge the communication barrier between humans and robots. We are mainly looking at two possibilities. One is augmented reality where the robot can express information and also the human can use these holographic cues to control the robot. We are also looking at EEG signals. We are using EEG to get the brain waves of the human to understand if the human is in stress and needs help from the robot. Look at our architecture. This is the architecture for our first part. I think any technology is geared towards making a positive impact on the society. The technology itself is exciting, but also there is a great application. The Brazilian Student Association at Stanford has a way to keep tabs on what Brazilian politicians do after they're elected, and brings more people into the democratic process. Check it out! Hi, we're Team Shaki from Stanford. Shaki is a mobile application that aims to connect legislators with their constituents in the hopes of fostering accountability and representativity into politics, both in Brazil and around the world. 
our users will have a mobile application where they will receive push notifications that tell them every time that one of their representatives in Congress votes on a new proposal. And then the user is able to say, oh, I agree with that decision or I disagree with it. And as time passes, the user is going to be able to see how much each legislator is representing them and the other users of the app. We don't expect the reaction to be very good from the legislators, but we really think that this can contribute to improving the quality of democracy in Brazil and elsewhere. I think the Imagine Cup has been uh, wonderful so far. It's been fantastic to be exposed to you know, such high quality mentorship. It's been great. What do you get when you combine VR, Azure, and two people who are really far apart? Convergence Ultra Reality, that's what. From University of Washington Bothell, let's meet Team Convergent right now. Hi, we are Team Convergent from University of Washington Bothell. Our mission is to enhance the way people communicate by moving them from the 2D world to 3D virtual world. Company like are sending their employees to different locations, spending like millions and millions of dollars uh, just to make the communication part smoother. Convergent is a way to solve it without the person physically moving to the location in order to share the environment. You run our application, you spatial map in your room, and then your room will have textures. These data, this environment will be pushed to our server running on Microsoft Azure. People who are in VR see what you are actually seeing in the augmented space. We add the immersiveness to online communication. AR and VR at some point are going to be converged. This is where conversion can be really used a lot in the future. Farmers who could use a little help with big data may soon be able to turn to Farmalytics. This team with members from Stanford and the University of California, San Diego brings valuable data to farmers in a high-tech way. Hi, we're Team Farmalytics. I'm studying at Stanford University and I go to UC San Diego. Farmalytics is a plug-and-play IoT sensor-based solution that aims to provide real-time actionable information about your farm in terms of vital crop growth parameters in any language of your choice and on any device of your choice. And all of this is powered through a Microsoft Azure backend. What we aim to do with Farmalytics is be able to increase the efficiency of land use, therefore increasing and maximizing the productivity of every acre of land currently under cultivation, simply because we need food security in the future, and precision and data-driven farming is the way to go. We actually grew up in farms, and our uncles and aunts still uh, have daily farming practices, so we've sort of seen how bad it can get in terms of you know, failed crops, failed yields, and so on. And as engineers, we believe that you know, we can use and leverage technology to help something that we can closely relate to. We'll check back and meet with the rest of the teams in just a bit, but first, have you noticed that they all have something in common? They all have a story to tell. Being able to get your message across in a way that'll keep people interested is part of the Imagine Cup experience. Participants were all lucky enough to get some expert tips, and we're letting you in on the secret. I present to you the top five tips for telling the story of your idea or product. Hi, my name's Ben Tamblin. I'm a Director of Communications here at Microsoft, and I've just got off stage to provide our Imagine Cup winners with some tips on how to deliver a really fantastic demo. Tip number one is to start with a really great story. This is uh, what we typically refer to as the GI index. You have good fortune, happiness at the top. You have death, despair, and destruction at the bottom. Everyone likes stories about happy people. This is a story arc we typically refer to as the man in the hole. We start with a guy, a little bit better than average, relatively happy guy, ultimately gets into trouble and gets out of trouble. Next story, boy meets girl story arc. Again, a very, very familiar narrative. Average guy, average day, meets a girl, everything goes well, ooh, and gets into trouble. And ultimately, we end up with a very, very happy ending. Again, a very, very familiar arc. The last story arc I want to tell you actually starts all the way down the bottom. This is a story about a young girl. This young girl has had a pretty awful start to her life. Um, her mother has died, and her father has gone on to remarry this vile and ill-tempered woman with two horrible daughters. Ah, so you know the story. So, the young girl, let's call her Cinderella. All of a sudden, she meets someone that fundamentally changes her life. Fairy godmother gives her shoes, handbag, mascara, 
means of transport, sends her off to the ball. She goes to the ball, dances with the prince, clock strikes 12, and everything turns to crap again. Ultimately, the prince comes around with a glass slipper, tries it on, and the prince and Cinderella go on to experience infinite happiness. <laughs> Again, a very, very familiar story arc. If you think of the books you've read, if you think about the movies that you've seen, it follows a very, very similar arc. The point of this is ultimately what we're looking for, whether we're pitching, whether we're creating a demonstration, is ultimately we are looking for that Cinderella story. What is the story that is ultimately going to move the people that we're talking to, whether we're speaking to a VC, whether we're speaking to an audience of 5,500 people, we're trying to move our audience from one place to a place that's different, and hopefully a better place. <coughs> hopefully infinite happiness. Tip number two is to really think about and know your audience inside and out. A lot of times when we think about the kinds of presentations or the kind of demonstrations that we want to be able to deliver, I think we look at it and go, hey, you know what, I know my content so done well, and I know that I can inspire any single person to be able to be inspired by some of the stuff that I have. But I think unless you truly know your audience and understand what it is that makes them unique, you're never going to truly get them to buy in in a way that you need them to. Tip three and tip four to have a really amazing beginning and ending. I will rehearse the first 30 to 40 seconds of whatever pitch or whatever demonstration I'm delivering. There's, um, there's, this, there's this very, very common saying um, that um, you know, a goldfish has an attention span of about six to seven seconds. Um, let me be super clear, humans way worse, <laughs> way worse. My point is, is that it's very, very difficult to be able to maintain and control people's attention. So starting great helps. Also, you need to have a great close. No one is ever going to remember everything that you said, but they are going to remember how you close and they're going to remember how, they, how you made them feel. So having a really strong close is also important. And tip five more than anything is to go out there and enjoy yourself and have fun. Every single person in the audience, no matter whether you're speaking to five or five million people, is ultimately rooting for you to be successful. Hopefully you'll be able to use those tips to sell your own ideas. And since we left the story of this year's teams incomplete, let's pick it up right now. Ensuite, une équipe très cool. Sorry, that's about as far as my high school French could take me. Now, if this team from MIT has anything to say about it, I could soon be speaking French fluently. Hi, we're, we're Team Fluency from, from MIT. MIT. Fluency is a peer-to-peer -peer language learning web application, and it connects two users who want to learn each other's native languages, and it allows them to video chat, message, and practice speaking with each other. What we're hoping for is anybody who like wants to learn a language and get more practice with it can just go to our website, sign up, and then get instantly practicing with somebody else. That's what our instant video feature is for, because all you have to do is be online, and we'll find somebody else who's also online and also wants to practice, but has the opposite language settings as you. We're actually really excited about our idea, because I personally would love to use it myself. I think that Imagine Club is a great thing. Like We learn so much through this experience. And I think we have a much greater chance of success just because we went through this experience. Or any other language using fluency. Public defenders are super overloaded with cases and can use all of the help they can get. There's a lot on the line. A team of students from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign hopes their invention can save the day. Hi, we're Lawless from the University of Illinois. We all knew, you know, we wanted to do something that was trying to make a real impact on real problems in the world. The real goal with Lawless is to help not only public defenders, but the citizens they're trying to protect. Public defenders, on average, have only seven minutes to build and understand the entire case for their clients. Given a set of documents, public defenders can upload them through our service um, and get a concise understanding of the major points in each and have easy access to drill into which topics are most relevant or which stand out in some unique manner. We can apply the technology for less is more to like doctors for medical cases or the general population for end user license agreements as contracts and leases. It's been really cool to say, wow, I wanted to solve something and now it could be a real company. The technology that powers Lawless, I see in the future being a part of our everyday lives. 
For first-time parents, babies can be scary. Are they happy? Hungry? Are they learning properly? One team from the University of California, Berkeley came up with an intelligent companion that offers up some help along the way. Meet Team Milestone. Hi, we're Team Milestone from UC Berkeley. Joey is a smart pet that is meant for children aged 1 to 5. It's for them to interact with the child, to track their emotional, cognitive, language development. Mama. So as to check if they hit their developmental milestones in case that there's any problems or developmental disabilities. Okay. She captures all this information via a microphone as well as a wide-angle camera. And this information are actually sent to the cloud using Azure Q and Block services. We came up with this idea during a hackathon um, back in school. We envision being able to work with current companies such as Huawei with their products because right now we are focusing on the software and then the hardware is better to partner and then we can sell it together out in the market for parents. So far Imagine Cup has been really inspiring. It was really cool to actually hear from them and see their, their tech. Somewhere out there, right now, a 10-year-old kid is seeing an ad for student loan refinancing. Not very helpful. Luckily, a team from the University of California, Berkeley, and Santa Barbara may be able to make ads make a little more sense. Hi, we're your team NGNL from UC Berkeley and UC Santa Barbara. We're all very avid internet browsers. We spend a lot of our time online, and advertising is a huge issue for us. So we definitely made this product with the consumer in mind. We've created Admiral to target the problem of like excessive advertisements and the war between um, websites and users. The idea being that users who are bothered by advertisements resort to ad block, which in turn deprives websites of revenue. So our idea was to somehow balance these two, um, create a compromise that allows users to selectively view ads without bankrupting the content creators that they know and love. Admiral is a server running on Microsoft Azure, and it uses MongoDB for storing ads. Whenever you view an ad, Admiral can block it server side. In five years, we hope that sites everywhere will be using Admiral, and users will be also using Admiral to block the ads so that we generate a new kind of advertising economy where users control their ad viewing experience without hurting their favorite websites. With a few more teams to meet before we start revealing the winners, you may notice that a lot of these teams have ideas that would also make great business ideas. Now, being a startup isn't easy. It's a confusing world for a student to jump into, especially if they're looking for funds to get their idea off the ground and keep food in the fridge. Viable businesses don't just create themselves, you know? That's why our teams were lucky enough to get some expert advice from some of the best business minds out there. And since you're watching this, so can you. See, things are getting easier already. Check it out. How do you separate your brilliant idea and the, and the emotions that go with that to, no, this is actually something a customer will buy or won't buy. When we look at sort of the, the mindset of you know, successful growth-oriented entrepreneurs, what I see is this really interesting blend of confidence and humility. Like you believe in yourself and your team and your idea, but you're humble enough and you listen well enough to the market to make sure that there's alignment there. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs begin with, well, I'm already convinced and you should be too, forgetting what the journey that you had to travel to, to convince yourself. So being able to back up and be like, what would it take for my idea as, as a new idea in the world to get over a mountain of behavioral a barrier? And, and you have to meet customers at that place and work back to where you are, not just assume that people are going to fall in love with a thing that, in the way that you did because it took you a while to get there. And that, I have to say, is probably the biggest psychological flip that founders have to get to. Like, look, I don't care if you like your idea. You have to go talk to 50 people, 100 people, 500 people, however many it takes to really make sure that your idea not only is interesting, but addresses a, a, a known, felt pain point. And if it doesn't meet that bar, you probably haven't thought hard enough about what you're really doing. I want to pivot a little bit, no pun intended. <laughs> the art of the pivot. What do you guys look for in those pivot moments? And when, as an entrepreneur building a company, what are the signs you should be looking for to realize there could be a pivot here? So Hazel, they came into program and the team had previously worked at another um, human resources company, a payroll company. So that, that they knew that category and they thought that what the world needed was a new, more modern human resource information system, HRIS system. But when, when, when they went out for the first month and started talking to customers about it, they were getting a lot of that, a lot of meh. Like they weren't getting the pull, the customer pull from it. And at some point, probably in week four of the program, we had a really hard conversation. You think you're doing something and you have customers and you have product and you have momentum and you could keep marching down that path. But if you really want to win at something, you can't be HRIS and manager development, you have to own down to the ground the thing that you're best at. 
And we had to say, you guys probably have to walk away from the thing that you spent the last year plus building and selling, and you have to rebuild from the ground up and you have to change your, you know, your marketing and your narrative and everything else. And they did that, and they did it with enough time left in program to come to Demo Day for those who saw it and absolutely nail what they're doing. But, but it's only because they were very agile in their thinking and their execution to be able to do that. And it, it's scary as hell. You may have an intention that you think clearly is gonna resonate with your customer. When you see your customers kind of hacking your product to get to what they really want, it's time to sit up and take note, right? If that's what your customers are telling you something by the way they interact with your product. Cool, let's talk fundraising. What raw advice would you give founders here today who are taking their ideas in front of an investor, what are the words that you should be listening to? I think there's certainly some fundamentals around really showing that uh, not only do you believe in this idea, but you've assembled the best team in the world. The number one box to check is not product, it's not market, it's team. As an aggregate, the team has to be masters of their domain, their ability to execute product, their ability to communicate, and their ability to sell. One of the best blessings you can get is a quick no. You know, uh, and Chris is so good at saying, you know, I've seen this movie before, I know another product, here's why I'm not investing, and take that feedback. I think a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs because it sounds cool. You have to be so sure that this is the thing that you should be doing with your time and with your life. The persistence required to be effective at it, the level of humility about, I know all the things that I'm wrong about or where I need help, but I am sure that I am the person that, that needs to push this idea forward and get it into the world. If you don't have that level of conviction about what you're doing, think harder about the idea you're doing, because two years in, when you're running out of money, those are the dark days. If you don't begin from a point of, this is the highest and best use of my time in my life right now is to do this work. So I think we're at a point where we can open it up for Q&A from, from the crowd. So does anyone have a question you'd like to ask? How did you see the best teams come together? Some of the most exciting teams for us are come to us where they've met in a, in a work environment and they've actually worked on a problem and they've fallen in love with a problem and felt that that problem either wasn't being addressed or not being addressed well in, in this place that they were. Those teams are incredibly exciting to us. Are there any sort of techniques or you know places that you can sort of like talk to real investors and get brutally honest feedback from those actual real investors? If you take the investment question out of what you're doing and go to people who happen to be investors and say, I don't know if what I'm doing is productive or not. You see a lot of deals, can you give me feedback on it? Might be a more productive way to get honest feedback than saying, I'm raising money, do you want to participate? For really busy people, putting guardrails around the ask. Like, I would love 20 minutes of your time um, to get your feedback on my go-to-market strategy, right? Make it really crystal clear. Make it easy for busy people to say yes, I think is one technique that really works. Being in school is like the golden ticket. No, everybody says yes to students, so please take advantage of it while you can. Find those trusted advisors who can shorten your path to the actual check writers. Do you have any techniques to sort of gauge whether customers will actually be willing to put their money down when the time comes? How do you take the human part out of it? Because often if you're in front of them and they clearly, they, they know that you like it, people just, they wanna, they wanna please you, so they'll say what, so like how do you take emotion out of the evaluation is one question. And the second is, how do you escalate their commitment? Which is, how, how, do you, how, do you put, how do you essentially put their commitment under stress? Not just to say, oh yeah, I like it, it's interesting, but, but to say like, what would you give up to get this? And getting out of the echo chamber, that's your friend network. Your friends and family aren't gonna wanna offend you. So they'll tell you, of course, it's the best thing since sliced bread, yeah. but yeah. yeah. There's a startup um, that was initially here called Joy that's now moved to San Francisco, and it was founded by a bunch of Azure engineers. And they were sitting around having pizza one night and realized there isn't a cohesive platform for folks who are going through wedding planning and the actual wedding. So they wanted to create Joy as a platform to do that. They wanted everyone who was attending the wedding to either list that they were single or married. <laughs> and who do you think asked that question? Men or women? Women. Interesting fact. So they enabled that feature, user activity spiked, and they have a whole ton of new data that, that can actually take that, that um, effort forward. So Rebecca, when you're talking about some of the things, I just thought joy, I'm like, well, this is a perfect right. story. What uh, are customers doing to hack the experience yeah. that they really want? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, you nailed yeah. it. And so they, they actually discovered one of their most favorited features. You wouldn't think so, but yeah. And what happens is they're actually connecting, couple, like couples are coming out of weddings now as a result of joy. Uh, bundle joy is their next, next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Question. At what stage in the startup journey would you advise is the right time to apply to an accelerator? 
I think what we want to see is teams that are committed to a, to a path, already executing against it and looking for acceleration, for, truly for help getting somewhere. Is it clear that you're already on a path where you're likely to be successful and, and our, our support will make you more successful more quickly? That's what we really want. Congratulations again, guys, for being here this week. And, uh, and I guess we'll wrap up. Yeah, thanks thanks for having. to you. Yeah, nice yeah to congrats to you guys. You <laughs> clearly are amazing. Let's meet the last four teams in this year's competition, shall we? Filling orders from a huge warehouse can take forever. Luckily, a team from Georgia Tech combined augmented reality and warehouse technology to lend a hand. Check it out. Hi, we, we are, are Team Archaeologics, Archaeologics from, from Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech. Archaeologics has built an application called PicAR. PicAR is an augmented reality application on the Microsoft HoloLens that helps you find and pick orders in warehouses. Pick AR works in four simple steps. First, the picker puts on Holland, then he's guided in real time to store the item. Third, he grabs the item and scans the barcode. Fourth, he's ready to go and all the information are updated to a warehouse database on Azure. We've noticed numerous benefits when we tested our technology in our lab at Georgia Tech. We noticed improvements in the speed at which we pick the orders, the accuracy, and how cognitively demanding it is to pick using augmented reality compared to other methods. There are 750,000 warehouses across the world that ship over $1 trillion worth of goods every year. So we think that the technology that we've developed can be deployed globally. While I make it look super easy, not everyone is as much of a natural as I am when it comes to public speaking. From Drexel University and Rochester University, this team thinks they have a cure for speech anxiety that uses machine learning. Hi, Hi we are Team Orai from Drexel, Drexel University, University and University of Rochester. Orai is a mobile app that helps you become a better speaker. It uses the latest advancements in artificial intelligence to give you instant insights on your speech. You just hit the record button, talk, and Orai gives you feedback as though a real human speech coach would be giving you feedback. Whenever you start speaking into Orai, we stream your speech in real time to our Azure service, and we analyze your speech for different aspects, like your energy, or your use of filler words, or how fast or slow you're speaking. We envision users treating this as a sort of long-term training application, giving them progress metrics as they improve, and eventually ending up with a real clear improvement in their public speaking ability. We want everyone from a young age to a professional to use Orai to help himself to speak better. We all have a pulse. I mean, if you didn't, you probably wouldn't be watching. And using that pulse, cardiologists can gain all sorts of insights into heart health. This Princeton team thinks they have a new way to do just that. Meet PulsePal. Hi, Hi, we're, we're team, team PulsePal Pulse Pal from Princeton. Princeton. PulsePal is a technology that allows anyone with a camera and an internet connection to send us a video of a person's face and we send them back vital signs about that person. Everyone cares about their health and the health of their loved ones and as PulsePal we are allowing people easier access to that critical health information. We basically analyze the minute fluctuations in green light because hemoglobin absorbs green light in your face and that's how we can tell what your heart rate is. We allow developers to basically call our API and integrate our uh, technology into whatever devices they want to build. So if they want to build a heart rate monitor, um, like a baby monitor, or monitor like elderly parents, all sorts of applications. Um, but it's all sort of powered by the same backend running on the Azure. One of the most exciting applications of PulsePal is the potential it has to revolutionize healthcare in developing countries. If you can put a phone in someone's hand, you can basically put a clinic in their backyard. People with autism spectrum disorder may have a hard time interpreting other people's emotions. A team from Stanford who's found a new use for HoloLens AR is hoping to one day be able to help. Hi, we're SocialQ from Stanford, Stanford University. University. Social Q is an application for Microsoft HoloLens augmented reality headset, and it helps uh, children who are affected by autism spectrum disorder to better recognize facial expressions with uh, whom they're communicating. My little cousin who was recently diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, and our vision was really to integrate 
technology with real world interaction with other people to really empower her to, to talk with other people. The user will say, I see, and it will display next to the person they're talking to an adjective of what their face generally conveys and then an emoji. The HoloLens camera would pick up your uh, face and then we would send it to the Microsoft Cognitive Services Emotion API. And we take the breakdown of emotions and translate it into uh, just the word and the emoji so that it's direct and clear. We try to choose the most general and most helpful idea and we think that it's going to be successful. And those are all this year's teams. Coming from all over the country, the time our team spent in Seattle was a great learning experience, and they got to meet loads of awesome new people. If you didn't enter this year, maybe next year you'll want to take the plunge and take part in the fun. Here are just some of the highlights of this year's US Imagine Cup Finals. Welcome to the competition! <laughs> Woo! We are in an amazing, amazing time. This year, we had our largest set of applicants ever. Thousands and thousands of students. And you guys are the ones that made it. If you looked across this group, there's such an energy about what they can do to really change the world. So that's, that's why we're here. pretty inspiring to see like other people farther down the line and the kind of support that Microsoft has offered so far has made it that much easier to follow in their footsteps. I, I sense not only excitement but incredible energy. The people that are in this room today have the potential to do some truly amazing things with technology. It's been really inspiring meeting all these teams with ideas that I would have never thought of or even think that could be done. It was really cool to actually hear from them and see their tech. I think the Imagine Cup's been uh, wonderful so far. It's been fantastic to be exposed to you know, such high-quality mentorship. You'll be involved in creating brand new applications that will change the way that, that work is done. It's, it's just crazy what technology can do in so many different areas, and I think that's the biggest takeaway from a uh, gathering like Imagine Cup. The breakthrough that their technology solution will deliver, there's nothing like it. It's fantastic. The Imagine Cup is honestly incredible. Every step of the way, we've just been amazed at how incre incredible the other teams are, all the support we've been getting, it's, it's incredible. See what you missed out on? Get an idea and enter. 2018 could be your year. But right now, it's 2017, and it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to see which of our teams came out on top. Literally. As in, they're all on top of the Space Needle. And that's where the winner ceremony was held. Let's find out who won. Thank you, but uh, don't, don't clap for me. I didn't do anything. They did the work. Um, this has been a journey, right? It's been a journey for all the, all, the, all the teams, and we really appreciate the work they've done. It's been a journey for us as well. We had thousands and thousands of students sign up this year in the United States. We are putting forward six teams this year. Are you ready? OK. For sixth place in the 2017 US Imagine Cup Finals, Pulse Pal from Princeton University. Fifth place, 2017 US Imagine Cup finalist. Fluency from MIT. Come on up. Fourth place in the 2017 US Imagine Cup finals. Brazilian Student Association from Stanford University! Third place, Oculogics from Georgia Tech. Second place in the 2017 U.S. Imagine Cup Finals. Ori from Drexel University and University of Rochester. So now we've come to the winner. Okay. So first place in the 2017 U.S. Imagine Cup. Pharmalytics from Stanford University and UC San Diego. Guys. Great job. Awesome job. 
So, so before we close this part of this, I just want to say thank you to all the teams. Because again, you got here. You are the best of the best. So can we get a round of applause for all the teams, please? Really great stuff. Well, that does it for this year's U.S. Imagine Cup. Congrats to all of our winners. Next, they'll be on their way to the Global Finals, where in just a few short months, they'll duke it out for a chance to take home up to 100,000 bucks. You can also follow their journey at imaginecup.com forward slash USA, and hopefully watching them will help you take your idea to the next level. Good luck, and thanks for watching.